Hey folks, welcome back. We got this 2002 Dodge Intrepid in here. Uh, this has got the 2.7 liter and it has the, was it 42 LE? Or, let me, let me double check that transmission. But, yeah, 42 LE transmission. Um, it's got some transmission uh, control module uh, issues and whatnot. Um, so basically this video is just showing how to replace that uh, transmission control module, solenoid pack, whatever. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called. Um, this re involves lowering the uh, pan of the transmission, the valve body and all that stuff. So to start out with, what we've got here is we've got the, uh, as per the service manual, it needs the uh, shift lever, you know, all the way in the low position. So we turn the key on, shifted it down to low. Then went over here and disconnected the uh, negative battery terminal. All you have to do, the battery's buried clear down in there. But right up here on this, you can just uh, remove this part right here because this goes straight to the battery. This is just another ground that goes from the frame probably to the engine somewhere. Um, but it does not need to be unhooked. Uh, so right now we've got that. So now we're going to get this thing up in the air and go from there. Okay. So here is the bottom. Um, pan's pretty accessible. I mean, meaning that there's no cross members or nothing like that. Do you remove uh, to get it out of the way? It's probably gonna be a little bit close uh, with this exhaust right here, but we should be able to get around that. Um, up in here, there's a, an electrical connector right there. That's the main connector there. And there is your shift uh, cable coming down right there. And the way they talk about, I'll show you in the service manual, um, as to what uh, they want done with that. It's in the low position, so. Okay, here we are. We've got the disconnect, the TRS wiring connector. That's the one that uh, I just pointed out. You know, the sol solenoid wiring connector will main attach. You know, I mean, that'll, that should come down with the... Uh, Oh crap, my mind's not working the uh, valve body. Um, and then just says disconnect the cable from the shift lever at the transaxle and then remove the shift lever clockwise as far as it will go. This will be one position past the L position. So basically uh, we'll have to disconnect that. Um, and it looks like it just pops off of there and it looks like you'll, you'll turn it a little bit farther and then, um, then remove the shift lever, and then then we'll be removing the pan bolts. Uh, so right here, we're gonna be popping that guy off, probably just with a screwdriver or something, and then we're gonna take that, uh, we're gonna move it as far as we can, you know, clockwise, which would be looking at it, you know, from the top. So if it was, you know, if the lever was going uh, that way, if that's going to be, uh, if it's going to go that way, that's going to be like counterclockwise. If it's going to go this way, that should be clockwise. But anyways, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and get that thing, uh, popped off of there and then we'll, uh, go from there. All right. So now with that thing popped off of there, I'm going to try to get a good camera view of this. So now this is popped off. I said, I just used the screwdriver and popped it off of here. Uh, looks like it'll see it'll go one more position. Click. And that's um, where they want you to do. Now we'll take this uh, 10 millimeter bolt off of here and remove that uh, lever. And that's the position it wants to be in. But you can see, like if you move this thing all the way this way, you know, that's in the park position there. So we'll move it all the way far, far clockwise. This would be looking down on it. So it's kind of confusing but lever all the way forward. So that's where that needs to be. So the next step um, is removing these pan bolts and you're gonna drop oil and make a mess and this, that, and the other. So be prepared for that. All right, so the connector right here has these, uh, had this little red tab um, right there. Never mechanic loves. Said no mechanic ever. Anyways, I reached up there with a screwdriver, moved it to the left a little bit in the position that it's in now, 
and then you press on this uh, tab up here and then just pull it straight up and that's how that comes off so um anyways that's we're still gonna keep on going all right so there is the uh, shift lever off of there which is now right here so just take note of how that goes on there oh it even says up right on it um, but you can see this little slot right here that matches the shaft so there's you know you can't get this thing um, <clears throat> all wonky and out of out of position here but you just take your 10 millimeter and um, loosen this up that nut kind of just catches on there shouldn't have to hold it with anything just reach up there with one hand and loosened it and then just kind of wiggle it popped it off all right so now the pan is down this is what we see so next thing we got to do is get these this uh, filter off of here kind of has these clips that uh, you can either get with a screwdriver possibly or take that Torx nut there just kind of loosen it a little bit or whatever and uh, pull the filter out all right so that just uh, dropped right out of there one thing you want to make sure of is that this o-ring came out of there because you don't want to be putting a new o-ring on a, on a new filter you know and then uh, have your old one still up in there this one just came out like that and was just laying there so other than that it you know be right up inside of there somehow um, <clears throat> But anyways, the next step we got to do is we got to get out all of the uh, bolts with a 10 millimeter hex on them. Um, I believe all the other, well, at least according to the service manual, that's what it's showing. It doesn't really describe that that well, but uh, that's what it's saying to do. If any of the ones with the hex and all these ones with Torx, we will uh, they'll stay and they'll come with it. So. 10 millimeter hex, get all these bolts off of there. Um, <clears throat> keep in mind where they go because they might be different lengths. These don't look like that's gonna be the case, but that still could be. So when you pull them out, <clears throat> keep in mind of, you know, if you pull one out and you pull the next one out and you see that they're the same size, you keep going, you see that they're the same size, chances are you're pretty good. But once you get to the point where, you know, pay attention to the bolt size, and if you pull one out that's a lot longer or shorter, then pay attention to where that goes. Um, that way you don't get that messed up. So, all right, we will keep on going here. All right, so this is uh, how this thing comes out. Um, the main thing to, uh, as you drop this thing, um, is to watch out for these things because they, they go up in here like this and they don't want to stay but they come out and then there's another spring inside of this bigger spring right here so you don't want to mix all of that stuff up because right now you know there's not really anywhere for that to to go that's just where it sits um, but here see that you know, it's just kind of a funky deal, but um, I don't know what these are, some kind of a valve of some sort. Um, but anyways, you know, here's your shaft that this hooks to the um, uh, your shifter. So here's the deal that does your detents, you know. Uh, this is the range switch here. We actually have a new one. Um, so it looks like you get a Torx and undo that uh, screw right there and then this deal will pop up out of here This is the control mod right here that we're after So tipping this on its side we get like a t25 and get some of these other torque screws out of here And that's going to replace that and then we'll be able to go back up with this thing um, probably just gonna have to just set these on here like this and keep it very very steady and um, go back up with it there uh, not really much else we can do <laughs> so um, let's get the new part unboxed and everything and, and get it looked over and look at this part make sure we got that part right 
and then we'll keep on going. All right, so I got this thing propped up here so that I can remove uh, this steel here. Um, I looked at this right here, and I I count one, two, or yeah, one, two, three, four. If I can count correctly, um, which looks like we've got one, and then we've got two, three, and then four, and um, so there's a gasket underneath of here, uh, which you know this didn't come with. So we're just gonna have you know reuse it and whatnot. But uh, this looks like uh, T25 Torx, and we should be able to just lift this off of here and then reinstall that. And then we'll go ahead and do uh, replacing the um, this range selector switch. All right. So with those four bolts removed, we can now just remove this from the deal here. And there's the gasket which you know looks like it's going to be totally fine to reuse kind of got these little clips kind of clipped it in you know so what we'll do is we'll just stick it right on the other one there which i need two hands for just kind of clips in place there so it stays now we'll just stick this back on and, and remount the screws there okay so that is back mounted on there what we need to do is get take the same t25 and we'll remove that screw okay looks like that and this should just be able to come up and maybe through here I'm gonna have to lubricate this uh seal so we don't rip it because i don't have a new seal here <clears throat> yeah i just used some transmission fluid and just get my finger in it there did that and just remove this up out of the way so now then the new one can come in here and s slide in place here <clears throat> right where it needs to go and then we'll put the uh, screw back in and tighten it okay now we're ready to uh, got everything cleaned up up there do a little more cleaning on this but we're gonna you know push this up in here now these won't stay up in place um, so we're gonna have to just kind of rest them on here you know they'll they'll kind of stay but it's you know then you're gonna have to just finagle and you know maybe you have to keep these out and then start it up until you get to the you know get like this guided in or something like that um, you know to get these started in here uh, but this is how they go and you know lubricate this seal again get some oil and lubricate i've put some oil around here this is a rubber seal here you know because this is external and then i'm just gonna leave this cap on because it comes off real easy so we'll just leave that on there keep anything from getting in there uh because that's where that thing gets plugged into and just go up nice and straight with it everything this should kind of guide its way in in there um you know right straight up into there but don't have it cockeyed or anything like that and go up with it and uh, you know start your bolts I don't know if I mentioned this before all the bolts that we took out were all the same length and uh, we'll show you kind of all those There's a couple of them that are sort of hidden harder to see when you get them good go, take them off and whatnot so when we get this back together we'll we'll see it better so <clears throat> we'll get that done we'll keep going okay so it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get uh up in there uh main key is don't force it um you know just make sure everything is is straight and just give it a little bit of pressure and move wiggle move you know just don't if it's not going don't don't force it there's no reason that it has to be you know forced there's no clicking into place or anything like that it just kind of just goes up there i did told you i was going to leave this on that cap for that plug um right up there but it that plastic cap did not fit through uh the hole so i had to take that off right now i've got this one here snugged up and one over here snugged up and the rest of these i just got started in their holes one of the ones that was hard to find i think this is the last one i took out just because it was harder to see when you get have oil dripped on every one of these uh here but this is where this is where they all all go 
and um, yeah, so <clears throat> that's pretty much that. So now we just get all those snugged up, and then we'll get the filter up in place. All right, so the filter has its uh, O-ring here. Make sure the old one's out, and then it's just going to go uh, up into place here, and then um, replace your uh, clips. You know, like this clip, we had to move a little, we had to loosen that and remove it uh, to get it out of the way of that uh, bolt that had to come out. But this one here uh, remained where it was at. So we'll snap that and, you know, get this up in place, get those clips situated, and then uh, we'll be ready to, to uh, clean the pan up, put the pan back on. Okay, all right, so we got our plug uh, plugged back in. So we snapped it down, pushed the red tab you know, back this direction. Uh, went ahead and, and uh, put the lever back on, tightened that uh, 10 millimeter nut, and then made sure it was still in the farthest, uh, you know, we should have never been out of position, but then it wasn't, but make sure. And then go one click to the counterclockwise, because that's the way it was, and then, uh, go ahead and uh, snap your deal back on now um, because our shift lever should be still in low and then what we're gonna do now is um, I can take and roll roll both of these tires uh, forward and I'm gonna go ahead and shift it into uh, the lever up there into park and uh, just make sure it goes into park and we should be good to go as far as uh, that goes and then we'll lower this thing down and uh, get it filled up uh, well, folks, hopefully that um, helped you out some as far as, uh, you know, at least I well, know it wasn't a step-by-step. -step. That's not how I usually do my videos because I just I just don't do it that way. But at least uh, all the high points, hopefully, were all um, covered and everything. I think we're putting this thing uh, probably when I think we put about maybe six quarts of... ATF in there somewhere around there. I can't remember exactly five or six, but I, I really don't remember for sure um, You know just replace whatever you know just fill it up to the uh, There's a hot and a cold on the dipstick as far as you know, so Filled it up to the cold part with it in gear and you know park and all that stuff or in gear a couple of times then park uh, Checked it I drove it around got it, you know operating temp and then uh, went and you know used the hot part of the dipstick which is a little bit higher and just filled it up there and I, I think it was about six but uh, yeah anyways hopefully this helped you out and thanks for watching